Jay, uh, you're amazing, and and I, I know a lot of people know about you and and f you know follow your messages. But uh, I'm happy to give you another platform to reach more people because it's it's incredible what you're saying and what you're doing. So you were a monk in India. First of all, how did you? Why did you become a monk, and and how long did that last? And <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. When I was growing up in London, I had three choices to be a doctor, a lawyer, or a failure. And I ended up at business school, so I guess I was the third. And I was going to business school, and every week we had CEOs, entrepreneurs, celebrities coming to speak and share their stories. And I was fascinated by how people went from nothing to something. Mm -hmm. And one week I was told that this monk was invited, and I actually said to one of my friends, I said, I'm only going if we go to a bar afterwards because I wasn't interested in hearing a monk's perspective on life. So my friend forced me to go. He promised me we'd go to a bar afterwards and it changed my life. It was the most captivating presentation I've ever been to. And he spoke about selflessness and service and kindness. And it just got me hooked. So I spent all of my summer holidays from 18 to 22, aged 18 to 22, half of them working in the finance corporate world in suits and driving cars in London and spending the other half living as a monk in India. And when I was 22, I decided to turn down my corporate job offers and go and live as a monk in India for three years. And half our days was silence and half of it was service. So we meditated for half the day and the other half we were trying to serve humanity and make a difference in the world. Wow. So that is why you decided to not just be in India and be a monk. You decided it's better to be able to share this knowledge. Yeah, well, when I left and came back, I was in debt. I moved in with my parents, age 26, mm -hmm. and I was trying to figure things out. But a lot of my friends now worked at large organizations, and they were going through stress and burnout and pressure. And so they started to invite me to speak at their companies about everything I'd learned as a monk. And I started to do that, and I started to see impact inside these organizations. But I really felt, I was like, this knowledge and wisdom needs to reach everyone in the world. It needs to reach further than just corporate boardrooms. So in 2016, only three years ago, I started making these videos, which were these wisdom bites. And thankfully to all of you and many others who've watched them, they started to spread. And Ariana Huffington was someone who really supported them and gave me an early tipping point too. Yeah. So the the most uh, I think the most viewed you had 365 million on uh, the topic of of pressure, basically stress. So what do you say to people about that? Absolutely. I think it's something we all feel today. And the biggest pressure I think we feel is we're rushed by other people's timelines. We're rushed by the success and achievement of people around us or we're rushed by the supposed success and achievements of others we see on social media. And the biggest thing I'd say is, give yourself permission to take time. Give yourself permission to recognize that living your passion and creating a purpose takes time. For some people, they've waited till 30 or 40 or 50 or 60. We want it to happen in our 20s but your best years are yet to come. Yeah, and I think what you can't do anything until you're actually aware of it anyway. First of all, you have to have the awareness, and I think some people may be hearing that for the first time, and then once you're aware, you can take steps. So I think gratitude is probably the most important thing that, that you can have, and you, you speak of that too. So what can people do today and include and, and speak about gratitude for a minute? Absolutely. So one of the things about gratitude is that studies show that when you're in gratitude, when you're feeling gratitude, gratitude, you can't be in another state. So you can't be angry or sad or disappointed when you're being grateful. So grateful for me is like a seed. And when you're grateful, you plant this seed in your life, which is going to grow a beautiful tree and shade and fruits. And it helps you avoid what I call weeds in our life. So when we're planting sadness or disappointment or anger, these are like weeds in our life. So every day I'm trying to plant seeds of gratitude. And I recommend doing it the first thing you do in the morning. But even more importantly, the last thing you do before you go to bed. Because when you do it before you go to bed, you wake up with gratitude in the morning. So it programs your mind to be grateful the next day. Yeah, it's, and it's so easy to do. I think, so easy. I think, you know, sometimes it takes uh, seeing a, a tragedy or seeing something for us to realize how grateful we are for our lives and just the, the smallest things. So gratitude is so important. Um, you're, you're amazing. I wanted to do more with you. So uh, if you have a question for Jay and you want to find out more about him, go to our website. And uh, I just I want to have you on all the time, every day. I think <laughs> you're, you're so amazing. Kind. That means so much to me. Jay, you're, you're incredible. I know you, you've, you've mentioned me before, and it, it's, I have. Really, it's an honor. You're in so many of my videos. Well, it's so. an honor. Um, all right, <laughs> we'll be right back.